So today's class is called Another Radical Experiment in Empathy. As a Palestinian, right, I want to see, I want you to be able to develop a insight into seeing the, this conflict from the perspective, say, like of his parents, who both went over and volunteered to support the IDF, okay? I want you to be able to see the path to being here, seeing it from a Palestinian perspective, like really seeing it and really feeling it, and you really seeing it and feeling it. And for you, Zoe, I want you to be able to hold equally just both perspectives, like really equally. And I know you lean in one direction, but it's really important to lean equal. Okay, that's the experiment. And so what I'm gonna do is very strong, I'm gonna take a very strong position, Palestinian position, and then I'm gonna take, or actually I'm gonna start with a very strong Jewish position, and then I'm gonna take a very strong, or Israeli position, I should say, then a very strong Palestinian position. And your job is to follow me on this and recognize that I'm taking these positions because this is a college classroom. And the purpose of being in college is to think, and in particular to think in ways that we are not trained to think or ready to think, okay? So just keep that in mind as we move forward. I'm gonna go back and forth. start with three points that I want to make. The first thing is um, there are many more than two positions on on this issue. Okay, there, there are more than two sides and two perspectives. And this, this issue, even to say this issue is kind of almost silly because this issue is, is multifaceted, layered, and complicated issues um, that are call, call upon us to go back many uh, centuries, in fact, millennia. Many of you are wondering, okay, so what's up with, what's up with, what's, what, is, what are we talking about? What's Israel? Like, what, what is it, right? So Israel was formally established with the UN in 1948. And the process of Israel being established, like being constituted as a nation state in 1948. And there was a movement, you heard Zoe say something about Zionism, there was a, what was called a Zionist movement that started a hundred years before that. In fact, even before that, but mostly in the, in the late 19th century, of Jewish people who had the idea that, hey, you know, in the end, we need to fulfill God's covenant. And Christians, by the way, who are also part of this, because by fulfilling God's covenant, which is bringing all of the Jewish tribes, the Jewish people, back to Zion, and Zion is a word that's used for Jerusalem, but also for, for, uh, for all of Israel, to bringing Jewish people back to Israel will the final covenants of God be, be manifested, and then Jesus, God can return, Jesus can return, and this kind of thing, which is why you see many Christians who support Israel, the, the creation of the state of Israel, because this means we're getting closer to, to God returning, right? And you see many Jews who, or the most Orthodox Jews, who support, who, who reject Israel, because the, United, the UN created Israel, God didn't create Israel, so it's not really the covenant, the creation of the state of Israel. It wasn't done by God, it was done by people and by political entities like the United Nations. So there are many very orthodox and conservative Jews who say like Israel's not, you know, they, 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 it lacks complete support, okay? Now, there were people living in this area that we call Israel, okay? There were people living here. There were Christians and Palestinians and, and, uh, and, 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 there, were, and there were Jews. It's not like there was nothing here. It's like the United States. There were indigenous peoples living in the United States when the Europeans came over. So when the Europeans came over, they came over to somebody else's land. As after, after World War II, it started before World War II, the, the Jewish diaspora started to kind of pick up and in going into Israel. Um, but the more it started to pick up, the more the people who were living here started to say, wait a minute, hang on a second, I'm not really sure about this. Kind of like in this land, the, the Native American peoples were mostly pretty open to Europeans until ship, ship after ship after ship 
kept coming, and then finally your, the indigenous people started to fight back a little bit, to say, wait a minute, hang on a second, there's too many of you, like it's a problem. So there was some conflict, and the conflict is very complicated between the, the Arabs who were living there, and even some Jews who were living there, who were like, I'm not so sure I like this idea of all these Jewish people coming, and the Arabs who were living there, and the Jews who were coming back to a place. Not, not even... For some people, seeing it as a homeland, although it wasn't their home per se, right? But for other people, seeing it as, as, a, as a place to go up for salvation. Because this is after the Holocaust of World War II, which was the, the, the crimes committed against Jewish people are just beyond reproach, really. And so, just out of fear. And, by the way, people didn't want Jews. It's not like Jews. People were quite happy to see Jewish people go leave, leave their... Many people were happy. Many Christians, in particular, were happy to see Jews leave and go to Israel, okay? Well, at some point, things get divided up into the West Bank. The Palestinian territories get established, and this is considered the West Bank here. And is, uh, Jerusalem is right there, by the way. And this is Gaza. And the war that's happening right now is happening in this little tiny strip of land called Gaza. And so Palestinians mostly also live in Israel proper. 25% of Israel is, are Arabs, okay? Christian Arabs and Muslim Arabs. But uh, most Palestinians live in the West Bank and in Gaza. But increasingly, Jewish people start coming into Israel and have this idea, especially Jewish people who are much more attached to this idea that, hey, Israel is for Jewish people. And so they start moving into, not in Gaza anymore, because the Israeli state pulled all the Jews out of Gaza a couple decades ago, but they start pushing into the West Bank, into what are called settlements. These settlements of Jewish people, like living, really living. And at this point in time, there's about 700,000 Jews, Jewish people living in this area, okay? And this, there's a lot of conflict around that. So like, whose land? What's the land about? Now, I can tell this story. I can tell it that will, from a Palestinian as victim perspective, Okay, the story I just told you, it's pretty easy. And, if it, and anybody who's watching or any of you who have a Palestinian as, pers as victim perspective are going to say, like, hey, Sam, you, you missed a bunch of really important things. Am, am I right? Like, you, got, you really need to emphasize X, Y, or Z. And I can tell this story from a, a Jew as victim perspective. And if I tell it from that way, then there are many Jewish people who would be listening and watching, and some of you would say, like, ah, oh, man, you're really missing some key things about this. So for both of those things, we're gonna get, I'm going to touch on them later. So this is a, just a very quick thing. So we're, the people are fighting over this little bit of land here, okay? All right, now. Um, so now I'm going to make my second point before I start talking about this. So violence in Middle Eastern cultures and nations, okay? Okay. Um, in the Middle East, there is a fair amount of violence. And so if you're thinking, and I hear this a lot from people, wow, but there's always been violence in the Middle East. It's just a violent area. Of course, there's war going on. and there's, they, it's, They've always been violent. So like, why do we care? Because they're always killing each other, and they're always this, and they're always that. And like, it's just this emphasis on violence. And it is true that right now, in the Middle East, there is quite a fair amount of violence. Okay? There's violence here. We have 50,000 gun deaths in the United States, if we can, can include suicide. So half of that, if we leave out suicide. There's a lot of violence here. We're pretty... The Americans are... You can make the argument, we're a pretty violent people. But nonetheless, but there's a lot of violence in the Middle East. So if you're thinking, it's just, is it just me that when I read about some bombings happening or something, or is it that I, it always seems like it's somewhere in the Middle East and it's not, you know, Japan or Sweden or, you know, T T Tunisia or who knows why? Like, yeah, it's always in the Middle East, okay? 
So this is just 2023. And in fact, this is not just 2023. It's only eight months in 2023. So these are just points of various violent actions, okay? But what I want to tell you is that's this point in history. At other points in history, Europe. Europe was an such a violent hotspot in the world. This is a map from a thousand years ago of Europe. And Europe doesn't look anything like this. Look, the caliphate of Cordoba, the Muslim caliphate of Cordoba. Can you imagine how much violence it took to extract the Muslims, to push the Muslims out of Cordoba, out of southern Spain? Do you know the amount of violence that's taking place here? So much violence in Europe. And here's what Europe looks like today. In order to get to where we are today, it's just war after war after war after war. People killing each other. And so when you think about, whoa, those people in the Middle East, they're so violent. My God, they're always killing each other. They've always been killing each other. Just turn that around. And for millennia, it's like, God, those people of Europe, i.e., my ancestors, are so, we're so violent. My God. So now it happens to be the Middle East. And mind you, of course, Western powers have a lot to do with that violence, inciting it and keeping it going and so on. But I'm just going to let that go for a second. But Europe just happens to not be violent today. So it if you're not thinking about history, you're not realizing that, okay, now it's a little more in the Middle East, but that doesn't say anything about these people in the Middle East, okay? It says nothing about them. Any more than this violence doesn't say anything about my DNA, my culture, my genetics, and who I am and who my ancestors are, right? So here's the next thing. I want to say something about Jews, Muslims, Christians, and violence. First off, um, first of all, Jews, historically speaking, Jews have not been very violent at all. In fact, Jews have historically been the victims of violence. Judaism, Jews are the people of the book, not people of the gun. And so if you study Jewish history, you really see it's like, yeah, it's only kind of recently with the rise of Israel that we start to see this kind of shift. But historically speaking, we don't see that. Okay, but we do see this. See all these Muslims who are violent, man. These are ISIS guys, Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. Okay, these guys, this, these are guys, I think I took this photo from Syria. Man, these, these guys are really violent. And they want to create a caliphate, an Islamic State. Certainly, in wherever they are, but they, they certainly want to do it, again, wherever they are, but they'd be happy to do it all over the world. I mean, they, these are, they are violent Muslims. It's like, and, and we see these guys, they're, they're, man, there are a lot of them. So we think, huh, okay, how do we manage this? Because Muslims, you've got to manage the fact that there are a lot of violent Muslims right now in the world. And you got to hold that. you got to make sense of it. And you can't deny that. But you got 1.8 billion Muslims. 1.8 billion, bro. 1.79 billion Muslims. 1.795 billion Muslims. Think these guys are a bunch of lunatics. They want nothing to do with them. But they make the noise, and so they get the energy. And that's what happens. It's the noisiest people. It's the ones with the guns. It's the ones pushing things. They're the ones we pay attention to. So too often, when we then think of Muslims, when we think about Palestinians, right? We think about Muslims, because you're Muslim, right? We think about Muslims. We associate with this guy, these guys, because they make the noise. And what I'm telling you is like, yeah, you got it. You, you, as, as someone who's Muslim, you got to deal with that. It's like, yeah, man, they are. Okay, but now you got to have a way to frame it. So, and you got to frame these guys. Like, who are these Muslim knuckleheads? Massacre those who insult Islam. As if Allah 
needs these people to speak on behalf of Allah. Allah is so weak that Allah needs people, needs these people to speak. Allah and Muhammad, peace be upon him, how dare you insult Islam? Oh, but I, Allah, I, God, am so weak. I need these guys to stand up for me. He needs that? What do you mean? Massacre those who insult Islam. These people represent you. They don't to me. They don't to anybody who's thinking, but to people who are not thinking, they are you. And when you say, and all of you in class who say, like, yeah, I'm Muslim, that's where people's minds go. Freedom go to hell. So Muslims, got, you got to deal with, there aren't very many of these people, and a lot of them, this probably um, is from Europe. But you got to deal with this. Like, Muslims got to deal with this. This is a very tiny fraction. Just like there's a very tiny fraction of Christians who are really radical and kind of like that. But you got to deal with it. And then, you know, we have Boko Haram in Nigeria and Al-Shabaab in Somalia. These are groups that are trying to take over their countries and enforce an Islamic caliphate on the entire country. And they're willing to use violence in order to do that, and they do use violence, and they kill other people in the country, including many Christians. Anybody, and other Muslims, anyone who gets in their way. These guys are really pretty violent, and they need to be stopped. But they are also Muslims. It's like, okay, they're a fraction of Muslims, but they kill a lot of people. So we got to figure out, like, okay, but who are they in relationship to Muslims? And I'm bringing this up because this is like, this is fun. 1.795 in my estimation of Muslims think, want all these people to go away. And of the other tiny fraction of Muslims, there's a very tiny fraction that supports them. So we have to put this in some kind of perspective because this matters when we start talking about Israel and Palestine because Palestinians being Muslim, Palestinians being Muslim, get associated with these people. Not with people who are sitting around praying and meditating and so on. And when you stand up and speak, you stand up, you are associated with these folks and you're associated with these people and these people. So we need to have a way to, to understand them because Jawa is not, has nothing to do with these people, wants nothing to do with these people, and you are in that group who thinks these people are complete idiots, fanatics. Okay? Now, Christians... I know you don't think this is like seeing Europe as a violent, na violent continent. For centuries, the violence in the world was happening in Europe. In the 20th century, Christians of European heritage responsible for killing about 100 million people. 100 million people, my friends, Christians, okay? So, Christians, this is not an attack on you. I'm not attacking you, okay? It is, build some awareness here. We're looking at Christians. If we just use this graph, in the 20th century, 100 million people, the conclusion you, come, you would come to is Christians are really violent people. Christianity must be a really violent religion. How could Christians do this? I thought killing other people is against the basic rules and laws of Jesus. Like, how would you do, how do you do that? How do you make sense of that? Okay? So, but I'm not saying that. But you could. And so what I want for Christians to do is to say, hey, listen. 
oh, okay, I'm going to hold a mirror up to me and say, wow, you really could see Christianity as a violent religion because it allowed Christians in the 20th century to kill a hundred million human beings. So just hold the mirror up and, and just sit with that. And if you can sit with that, then it's going to be a lot easier when we start talking about Palestinians and start talking about Jews. It's going to be a lot easier to actually hear some of what's being said.